I heard him sell a, a joke to, to Sid, which was kind of silly. And, but, but then in the room, my impression was like a, it's, it's not like a glimpse of what he is. It was like a hurricane of what he stands for. Okay, we would read the sketches, Lucille and I, Monday morning, and Sid was there, Max Lieber was there, M Mel Brooks was there, and Mel Brooks would stand up after we heard, we, we did the sketch, and would start ad-libbing until he hit gold. He didn't know what he was, he didn't know where he was going. And then he would hit a, a line which was so beautiful, so powerful, that made a great sketch excellent. And sometimes, and Lucille and I would say, my God, we sit in the room, we suffer, we don't hear a laugh when we write. We don't know what's going to be. Mel opens his mouth, and so one line in the show, and there's screams and applause, and there was a touch of envy. But um, Mel told me very often, or told me that um, he absolutely understood the position, that he's, he, that he, he can only comment on something that we write. If we didn't write, he'd have not, nothing to say. Literally, he, he said that to me. But then the point was, he always, to him, he had to have a laugh. He'd walk in with it, with a joke, hoping to get a laugh. Because to him, a laugh is like a pat in the back, love. And um, silence is like a knife in the stomach. That's really how he is. One time at a party at Lucille Callens, he was entertaining, standing, brilliant. Then his, his routine began to fade a little bit, and you real, he realized, you could see that he was trying to get off with a laugh, and he just couldn't. He went on and on, then he walked off, and in the lobby, he left a note, a Jew cries for help, when it's still terribly important for him to, to get a laugh. He also can get a laugh. My goodness, if he wants to. No, the 2,000-year-old Jew and all that. That's outside. See there, they're absolutely brilliant. Share with us the description of you that Mel Brooks made. I love that. Oh, Mel, oh yeah. Well, Larry has some too, if I can't remember. Oh, Mel, Mel talking looks like a stork who's flying to the parents to tell them that he dropped the baby. <laughs> that look a little sad. That's what Sid said. I think Carl said, I was a father of them all. I mean, he had all the necessary guilt. In an interview to New York, he gave me some big compliments. And Mel tells in his interviews that I sent, I, I brought him to the Russian um, writers, Tolstoy, Gogol. He, he told that I sent him in that direction. That changed his life a lot because he began to really dig deep into human emotions and mm. so on, human relationships and so on.